Hi everybody, uh, my name is Mtwana Wabantu. My name is Mtwana Wabantu. And um, before we get started, uh, make sure you also check out the links uh, below. We have a program where we feed the homeless and uh, not just to feed because when you feed somebody, you're not changing that patient's life. So as far as feeding and apart from the feeding also, uh, you know, I give the brother sister of homeless knowledge. I teach them how to code and teach them a lot of skills so they can sustain themselves. You know, take some of them to the uh, recording studio, the one who have a talent so they can record the songs or show their talents uh, so they can change their life, themselves and their life. Also, some of them teach them computer, um, like Excel or programming so they can be independent and sustain themselves and change their life uh, in the lives of their family and the loved ones. So let's get started. Um, before Father Jew, we gonna get started. Okay, so this question right here, they say, um, uh, uh, just a second, just a minute, just a minute. Hey, we ready. So they say demand function, uh, maybe I should start with the previous equation. But I'm not, let's start with this face. Okay, let me go back to, so after this, you're gonna be able to solve this question right here, where they say touch show by the station, where it has a variable cost in, fix the cost, and then out also, you're gonna be able to solve this question, the one with elastic, inelastic, and then we have another one, which is similar to that, and then we have another one, and we have another one. So you're gonna be able to solve all these questions. So for now, let me start with this. All right. So let's say a demand function of a certain kind of bed is given by. Kind of bed? Okay. I mean, maybe people are purchasing the bed, like, okay, maybe the demand is high, demand is low, you know? Okay, just like how we always know. If the demand is so high, I mean, the price is gonna be bigger. If the demand is too low, the price is gonna be too. So it depends, demand and supply, supply. I mean, I was meant to say supply and demand, I'm sorry. It we'll makes up things, but let's get to the business here. We don't wanna start all the conversation, theoretical demand and supply. Now, they give you quantity equal to that. Now, they say, uh, they want to find the point of elastic of demand. Point of elastic demand. So that's how you solve it. Very good. So to solve point of elastic demand, there's a two method. Let me show you the first method. I'll show you the method. The first method is say uh, you say uh, P equal to A minus B Q. So see if your question is that format. Is that format? How no, it's not in that format. See? So I'm gonna say I'll take this P to the left. It's gonna be negative three P equal, and then here it's okay. Because it's a five three hundred. You know why I say that format? Because here there's a p, and here there's a q. So I have to rearrange. So I take these to the left for so three p, and then here a is going to be five there, and this q is going to come to the right. You see here there's a q. So it's going to become. Remember this is a plus. When it go over, it's going to become minus q. But uh, if you look careful, it's only p, no negative three. So we're going to divide by negative three. Negative three divided by negative three. This and this cancel. So p equal to. 530 divided by 3 is going to be negative, but no, yeah, because it's positive, right? So 530 divided by 3, this negative is going to go to the top. Negative and negative plus 1 over 3 Q. So that's a standard equation which is similar to this. And then I'll show you another method, right? Okay. So what that means, our A we know. This is the value of A, and this is going to be, look, let's compare. This is bad p is p but we need a what is that a what over here a equal to negative 5 30 over 3 what about b look negative positive okay look it's like negative b it's a negative b q we're gonna compare with this one one over three q you see what i'm saying because we compare like this so negative and positive just a negative see oh i'm sorry i'm sorry, sorry, sorry. yeah and this Q and Q cancel. So it's like negative B equal to 1 over 3. Divided by negative and negative. So it's going to be B equal to negative 1 over 3. Negative 1 over 3. So for that case now, our B equal to negative 1 over 3. So we're going to say our B equal to negative 1 over 3. That's it. Now, so we have a A and B. So the next step now, we're going to substitute in this beautiful little formula, which says um, elasticity of demand equal to negative 1 over B, P times Q. 
and we have everything except only one thing. Look, one is one B. What the value of B? B equal to negative one over three. You see, now we go P. What the value of P? If you look carefully, they say here we have P equal to one thousand six hundred. So P we have Q. Do you have a Q? We don't have a Q, but we can get the Q. You know how we're gonna get Q? Let me show you here. How we're gonna get the Q? I'm gonna raise it to another space. So we're going to say Q, look, Q, which is this one, 530. Oh my God, that is really stuff here. I need, I need them. Okay, I'll do this one. Because I was not supposed to raise this, but I need them. So. Sorry about that. I'll bring them back. Because I need to use those. Oh. Okay, just a minute. I'll bring them back. Because I can remember the number which I calculated right there. The B value. It's okay. They don't want to come and apologize. But I still have to recalculate them again. I just erased them by mistake. It was not intention. I must apologize. Oh, my beautiful pen. pen. It was my teacher. I forgot them. And you know, I cannot evade these girls. So let me just get them quick, quick. So we say we take this one to the left. Take this to the left. It's going to be 3P. I think I know them. Uh, let's see. Come here. Come here. Okay. So our A, I think I remember. A equals to 530 over 3. And B, it was. 1 over 3. Yes. Yes. Yes, I remember that. Yes, I remember that. So now we say we have everything. We have a B. Yes, B. This will be. And do you have our P? Yes, our P equal to. Uh, what is our P? Our P equal to 1,600. So we don't have a Q. How are we going to get Q? Look how we're going to get Q. We say Q. We use this formula here. Q equal to 5,300 minus 3 times. We're gonna replace this P with the value of P they give us. So replace this P with 1600 so we can get Q. So our Q equal plug in the calculator. So when you plug in the calculator that one, we're gonna say, we're gonna say what we're gonna do. Easy man. So this is gonna be um 500, 300, 500, 300. Minus, 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 minus what? Minus, I believe it's three. Let me see. Minus three times 1600. Minus three times 1600. So we close the bracket, and this is going to give us Q. So Q equal to 500. So for that, then we sell our Q equal to uh, 500. So we have all the values. So we can substitute into this equation. Now let's substitute. So elasticity of demand equal to negative one over B. What is our B? Our B equal to one over three. So it's one over three times times P. What is our P? P equal to 1,600 over Q. Q equal to 500. You see, but hey, this mathematica, this three is gonna go to the top. Oh, you can plug it the way how it is in the calculator. Let me plug the way how it is. There's no need for me to do that. Let's plug the way how it is in the calculator. Or you can just do how you think works better for you. Fraction, fraction. First, you put negative, and they come in a fraction, and then one, one, one. Sorry, one, one. Come to the bottom. Come to the bottom. Bracket, bracket. One over three. One over. Three, come here, close your bracket, come here, close bracket, and then come right there, multiply, fraction again, 1,600, 1,600, well, and this is going to give us negative 48 over 5, negative 48 over 5, okay, so now, elasticity of demand, Negative 48 over 5 
So elasticity equal to negative 48 over 5. But if you put it in, 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 in a decimal, this is going to be uh, negative. How many five there is? Nine. And then six. Nine, six. Okay. So this elasticity of demand. But hey, look, look at this. Look at this. Remember, when you get your elasticity of demand, you're not going to leave like that. You have to do something. That's elasticity point. Elasticity point. This one here. But you're not going to leave like that. What you do, you need to determine if it's elastic or inelastic, or you cannot, or it does not lie on either of those. How do you determine the elasticity of demand? This is what you say. You say elasticity of demand. You must write absolute. What is absolute mean? Absolute, for example, if you have, let's say, any number, let's say, negative 3, absolute. If you write those absolute, the negative goes away after. It's going to become 3. So what is the absolute of, let's say, 8? This is going to be 8 because there's no negative number. But even if it was going to be negative 8, it's still is going to come out in the top. Three. That's how absolute works. So when you say absolute of elasticity, point, you say, say negative, 9.6 elasticity which is going to be 9.6 but when the elasticity is greater than one like how we see here and then we say the demand is elastic if the elasticity is less than one the demand is inelastic there's a elastic and inelastic if your final answer after you plug in the absolute, if it's bigger than one, and then E, we call it elastic. But if it's less than one, then it's inelastic. But in our case right now, we find the last answer equal to 9.6. But what is 9.6? 9.6 is greater than one. Or you can say like this, look, elasticity, let me use another one. We take our negative 9.6 and then we get equal to 9.6 and this is greater than 1. So it's elastic. The demand is elastic. The demand is elastic or elastic demand. And that's our final. So now you're going to come here and say, okay, uh, 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 which one is that? The answer should be 8. Okay. Our answer is going to be 8. This is our answer. Here. Elastic. If 9.6 is greater than 1 and elastic. You see this one, they were trying to confuse. They say it's good, but they, no, it's not elastic. It's not even right. Because they say absolute. So, for this case, that's going to be our answer. Let me show another method quickly. So, another method, you have to do differentiating. So, for the people who don't know how to derivate, then they're in trouble. See, but if you don't know how to derivate, please, I'm going to attach the link below. Or you can tell me like, hey, I'm trying to, where is the link for differentiation? Let me show you now. So if you don't want to do this method, you can say like this, right? Elastic of demand equal to um, dq over dp, p times q. That's all. So how you get dq, dp? You can differentiate this. So you differentiate q is going to give you dq. Means this q go, means the derivative of q. When you differentiate number which has no letter or is constant, means it's zero. So we don't have to write anything. You have to know this. When you differentiate constant, means zero. Now you come here. When you differentiate this p, it's going to be dp, but you still have your negative 3 here, and this p is going to become dp. But what do you need? You need dq over dp. This I'll divide by dp. I'll divide by dp. This and this go. So finally, our dp over dq equal to negative 3. I can write here. But dq over dp equal to negative 3. Now, what is the p? p equal to 1,600. And what is Q? We can get Q. We did actually. We remember we substituted here to say Q equal to 5, 300 minus 3 times P. P equal to 1,600. And then remember when you substitute this equal to 500. So let's finalize. So we finalize by saying elasticity of demand equal to dQ over D equal to negative 3. Means this equal to negative 3. P. What is it? P? 1,600. And then over 500. So you plug this in the calculator, and then it's going to give you 9.6. Negative, because it's a negative. Negative 9.6. But then, you have to find the absolute of it. 
and miss out the top negative 9.6 and this is going to give us positive 9.6 because anything comes out of the other must be positive but a 9.6 when it's bigger than one and when it's bigger than one means elastic when it's bigger than one is elastic but when it's less than one we go in elastic but for now we see it's bigger than one so it's elastic which is going to be the answer here option one yes so i want to do all the questions but I, you know i'm trying to split the time okay so we're not going to spend a lot of time in one video so for that being said i'll stop here and then we go to the next question hey do not forget to go to the link below to see what we do for the community so follow me on instagram the same name Utwana underscore bantu there you're going to see what we do some pictures man you know, we take care of the family, they take care of us. We're like a beautiful family. It's a homeless brother. You know, I'm a homeless baby. I'm a former homeless baby for four years. And I'm proud. That's why I go back and help people with a skill. Did you know I'm a computer engineer, right? Huh? Yeah. So for that be said, man, thanks a lot of your time. Peace. And I'll see you soon. Check me on TikTok too. I do my dance right there. Hey. 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 I do my dance right there. Go and check me on TikTok. I have my dance all i do dance on tiktok i don't do the teaching stuff i hate studies and educating people i just want to dance yeah